I never really thought that in America, the spouse of an American could be deported. This is what we're facing today. Henry and I are going to go into this building behind us, and a judge may determine that my husband should be torn away from me. I don't think this should be happening in our country. <laughs> like it's over. Right there. You're such a sweetheart. Everybody does that. This is a story of two couples. One who fought a losing battle against the U.S. government. And another couple who fought that same battle and won. Both of these couples are gay. They're people who found each other, fell in love, and decide to spend the rest of their lives together. But because one partner is from another country, staying together has been a big problem. By the state of Connecticut, that I now pronounce you married in love and life forever. <laughs> American citizens have the right to sponsor their spouse for a visa. But in most states, gay couples can't marry. And even in the states where they can, the 1996 Defense of Marriage Act, known as DOMA, explicitly prevents the government from acknowledging a same-sex marriage for any legal purpose. Here's my hand. Here's my voice. Those couples are all married because in various jurisdictions, activists and legislators and courts have achieved marriage equality. But the day after those couples get married, they are once again unequal. They actually are suffering from marriage inequality because while they are married under their state's law, the federal government um, and almost all states in the United States don't regard them as married. Henry Valandia is from Venezuela. He's a dance teacher and performer, but he spent nearly two years fighting deportation, even though he and his husband, Josh Van Diver, are legally married. Coming to America for me was like um, a new beginning. Uh, I come from a different culture where, you know, being gay or being homosexual is not, a, it's not something that you can really speak about. I came to America and I discovered who I am and what I really want to do. He came out when he really know Josh, you know. I think he was fighting with himself. You know, he was young and he was confused. Got it? All right, here we go, con la música. Some people might think this is a story about gay marriage. Others may say it's a story about immigration. But what these couples, and many thousands like them, will tell you is that this is a story about what's fair. And certainly, not everyone agrees on what's fair. If you're a straight person in the U.S. and you have a, just a fiancé, you don't even have to be married. And you can bring your loved one to the U.S. and you just have to promise to get married within the first 90 days of their arrival. And then they're on the road to permanent residency. Well, you know, here I was living with him, sharing my expenses, my home. We shared everything in life uh, that I wasn't even given a crumb like fiancé visa to, to cling to. For gay binational couples, the options are pretty limited. Many are forced to emigrate to a handful of countries that recognize a gay spouse, which is what happened to Tom Smeraldo and Emilio Oeda. Three years ago, they moved to Canada from New Jersey, not because they wanted to, but because they had to. When Emilio couldn't find a job, they opened a neighborhood gelato shop. But they're almost always homesick. I was really angry about our move here. I was angry that I was forced to sell our dream home. And my parents, within that first year of when we moved, uh, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, and my dad had a stroke. And I felt horrible that I was leaving my parents at the time they needed me most. And I had to make a decision, my husband, my spouse, or my family. It's absurd to, to think that even though he's an American, he's a, you know, a role model American, you know, has to, to leave the country just because someone constitutional law. 
um, just because he's in love with me, you know. Um. When Josh and Henry met five years ago, Henry was trying to gain legal status by applying for a visa sponsored by an employer. And his former attorney led him to believe the process was moving smoothly. So he and Josh were shocked when he was denied the visa and placed in deportation proceedings. I mean, the reason we couldn't get married earlier is that when you marry someone, you're in a same-sex marriage. If the person's from another country, it can be harder for them to get all the other visa statuses mm -hmm. or the adjustments of status um, based on an employer because the government's afraid that he'll stay here with me permanently. Of course, he's my spouse. Hi, Amelia. <laughs> Take you, Tom. To be my spouse. Emilio is two times in exile. Like Henry, he's from Venezuela. And their stories are very similar. Emilio moved to the U.S. to escape discrimination. And like Henry, he had an employer who was sponsoring him for a visa. When he met Tom in 2002, his status didn't seem like a problem. When you meet and you're falling in love and making snow angels and having a good time, you don't really think about um, yeah, these, the repercussions of immigration law. You're just happy. But after September 11, stricter immigration rules had wreaked havoc on existing applications. And Emilio was left without status and put in deportation proceedings. I knew that people could sponsor their family members. And I said, well, I'm sure that, you know, if I'm going to say that I'm going to be you know, financially and legally responsible for this human being, I didn't understand why I wasn't allowed. Give me a kiss. Six years, five lawyers, some $70,000 later, Emilio remained in deportation proceedings. In the final Hail Mary of immigration tactics, he applied for asylum given the violent discrimination against gay people in his country. Amazingly, the judge granted the request. We were thrilled. We had friends, they put a congratulations on our house, they had balloons, we were so happy. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to do anything. We can just enjoy our lives here. And then 10 days later, we got a letter from the Department of Justice saying they were going to appeal the judge's decision. And we'd already been in court yeah. since 2003. And we just said enough of this. For us to be free and happy and have liberty and peace and prosperity, we had to get out of the U.S. I thought I would live and die and be buried in New Jersey. I never thought I'd ever leave it. Five, six, seven, and happy birthday to you. Back in New Jersey, Josh and Henry were still fighting the government. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Josh. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Josh. Josh and Henry were facing down a May 6 court date for Henry's deportation hearing. They had taken their case public. And news organizations and politicians were starting to take notice. At Princeton University, where Josh is a graduate student, people lined up to sign letters to stop Henry's deportation and repeal DOMA. We think that we're an equal society and the civil rights is, you know, like it's over, everything's great, but it isn't really. I think it's important for the American people to be aware that there are citizens who aren't being treated fairly and who are being denied rights. When I look at couples like Josh and Henry, I want to cry because I know, I know what they're feeling right now. Mm -hmm. Every knock on the door, you worry. You worry that is Every official letter that comes in your mailbox, you worry. My life is on the line next Friday, whether my husband is torn away from me. I can't imagine life without Henry. I mean, he's by my side every day, and he's been by my side for four and a half years, and he's literally grown into the other half of me. How can I live without that other half? There's one thing that separates Josh and Henry's story from Tom and Emilio's, and it's an important difference. In February, the Obama administration announced that it would no longer defend DOMA arguing that the law is unconstitutional. What that meant wasn't really clear until a day before Henry's hearing, when Attorney General Eric Holder surprised everyone by intervening in a case very similar to Henry's. It was the deportation of an Irish man, Paul Dorman, who had a civil union in New Jersey. Nick Mundy is the couple's attorney. 
I think it's tremendous that an administration declares a law to be unconstitutional, says we're not going to defend it in court, um, and then takes a, a step like they did with Mr. Dorman to pull the case off the court docket. Um, I think it's the start of something, hopefully something big. Whose marriage in America is helped when Josh and Henry's marriage is torn apart? Right now, all we have left is just to, to keep loving each other until the end and until the decision is made today. Cameras aren't allowed in federal court. But from the moment Josh and Henry arrived at the courtroom, it was clear things were going their way. It may have been the protests, the thousands of people who signed their petition, all the television and newspaper interviews they gave. Or it may just have been that they were lucky enough to face deportation at the exact moment the President of the United States decided to take a stand on DOMA. Whatever the reason, the state did not oppose a delay, and the judge, citing Holder's extraordinary decision the day before, postponed Henry's hearing some seven months. We have to come back in December for a master hearing. Um, but yeah, the, the judge basically stopped my deportation right now. Henry's case ultimately became a landmark case. Not long after this hearing, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement administratively closed Henry's case. In other words, his deportation was canceled. We are elated that he's not being deported. That's a huge victory, but that's a low bar. Like, now we're in limbo. He doesn't get any of the rights and benefits that a spouse of a non-gay American would receive. Let's be straight. DOMA is still the law of the land. And DOMA still states that uh, same-sex uh, couples are not eligible for these types of benefits in immigration court. All of this sea change, it came too late for Tom and Emilio. Emilio is banned from entering the U.S., so they don't get to visit their family. But even if the laws were radically changed, and there was an opportunity for Emilio to gain U.S. citizenship, they probably wouldn't take it. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I, I don't feel like so. I owe Canada a lifetime of paying taxes and giving them my support. Yeah. This country took us in when we didn't have a home. And I feel a fierce loyalty to it now. A loyalty that I used to have for the U.S. that I don't feel anymore. And uh, I'm, I always thought patriotism was kind of, you know, corny and stupid. But I'm kind of a patriotic Canadian now. Yeah.